just the corner of my bedroom that I use for my things. Also, I'm wearing my favorite cat jumper and I've got on my favorite lavender tights. I don't know if you can see them. But anyway, what I'm gearing up to say is I'm very in my element right now. I'm very creatively at peace. Let's open the discussion on my experience personally with creative slump. Uh, artistic blockage, writer's block specifically, the void of primordial chaos in which the belly of the beast exists, meaning you cannot possibly be inspired or motivated to create. I just came out of one of these voids myself because I had a lot of university work to catch up on. Personal passion projects went on the back burner and then because I stopped thinking about them for a certain amount of time, they just kind of dropped and they just kind of evaporated into thin air and I couldn't I couldn't sit myself down and just resume them because I wasn't in a headspace but before I jump into my personal trials and tribulations and meditations on this very specific experience that we all have and share I want to share with you some words on today's sponsor slid very relevant to university life so slid is a superbly designed extension that makes it unbelievably easy to take top quality notes while watching videos and online lectures and zoom classes slid does this in a way that allows you to take screenshots of timestamps with just one click Slid also manages all of the notes and video links automatically so that they remain safe and easy to view, which is impossibly helpful. Taking notes while watching videos is tedious, we all know this, and having to open other note apps and pause and type it out or paste it or screenshot, it takes up time, precious time that we could be using on passion projects to fuel our creativity. I say us because I have been absolutely obsessed with Slid since I came across Slid makes my life so much easier and gives me more time and I want you to experience this with me. I'll have a link in my description box so you can jump over and get started with Slid whenever you're ready. I always do that. I keep, I always make teas and then I forget that I have them and they go cold because they're always way too hot and they're way too cold. I always do that. It's kind of like a ritual now. I kind of have to have that boiling hot burn tongue experience and then that Oh, this is lukewarm experience. Wait, I read something about that earlier. Would it be a true Dakota video if I don't have to quote some kind of extract of writing before I do anything? So this is from Barbara Hamby's piece, Letter to a Lost Friend, and it says, There must be a Russian word to describe what has happened between us, like ostit, which can be used for a cup of tea that is too hot, but after you walk to the next room and return, it is too cool. That's such an incredible extract. I saved that to my stash when I found it because I'm trying to curate these collections on words that inspire me, which directly correlates to this video. Anyway, now before I jump into my personal methods of overcoming this void of chaos and nothingness, I want to talk about how normal it is to actually experience these creative slumps. Previously, if I couldn't produce anything original or quirky or even just decent. I hated myself because I thought that I was inherently bad and that's when the imposter syndrome sets in and if you have a creative period on then a creative period off and you create something but then you create nothing that's when you're going to get the imposter syndrome and think am I actually an artist? Do I actually create? Was that a fluke? Don't let that happen. It's normal. Everything's cyclical and you come in the ins and the outs so that you can prepare for each. It's balance. To some be patient with yourself, respect the process, and respect that it's going to work out. I'm going to list now some uh, notes that I take when I'm particularly drowning <laughs> in the slump and things that help me every single time without fail, and I really hope that this can help you too. I feel like the first thing that I need to mention before I mention anything else is to find your groove with self-discipline. What works for others is not going to work for you watching other people's how I get out of creative slumps videos and reading articles on their exact method might not work at all for you. That's okay, this is about finding your groove by trial and error. I used to watch hyper-productive content because I thought that my self-worth was measured by my productivity and what I produce, which is something that I have had to overcome over a very, very long, hard time and I still haven't overcome it. But I have a book recommendation for that and it's called How to Do Nothing by Jenny Adele. It really helped me with stillness and being content in what I produce at my own pace. That aside, hyperproductivity 
is dangerous. It is a dangerous concept because it burns you out and it's not for everybody. Don't compare yourself to somebody who can write 10,000 words in one day or who can produce incredible high quality paintings complete in just a few days or somebody who can do everything really fast and post about it and look like everything's so easy because it's, it's not. It's absolutely not. Find your groove via trial and error and don't compare yourself to anybody else. I, my groove personally is unbridled chaos. It's 10,000 words in one day or no words for three weeks. Consistency is not key sometimes. <laughs> it's a rite of passage to set those 5 a.m. alarms and try and get up and do three hours of creative work before your job or try and stay up till midnight doing something creative. But I feel like this is how we experience our trial and error with self-discipline and where we learn our limits and our burnout. Because if you keep pushing yourself beyond that point of this isn't really working for me or this is a bit too much on my plate or I'm not inspired, that's when you're going to end up much deeper with an issue like burnout that lasts a lot longer, which I have experienced way too many times. Don't uphold yourself to unrealistic expectations that are going to make you feel inherently less than. You are your own person and so many factors take place in this and just because you don't have a set time and routine every day to create doesn't mean that you're not on the right track. My ADHD will not let me have any kind of routine, so I have to be grossly intuitive and just work with it and just run with it, but I found my group because I respect that pattern and it's the best possible thing is to just listen to what your brain actually tells you. In saying that, routine is crucial for some people. Some of my friends who are artists have very strict times and regimes that they stick to and it works great for them. Again, trial and error. Now onto my personal favorite note that I always refer to and saves me without a doubt, no matter what problem I have, no matter how I am in strife, bask in the glory of beautiful things. This is maybe ambiguous and cryptic because it's relative. What do you find beautiful? Bask in it. <laughs> what inspires you? Surround yourself in it. Remind yourself of what inspires you and what inspires your vision as an artist and creator. It could be nature, it could be family and friends and company and intimacy, it could be music, literature, art, experiences, emotions. Surround yourself with everything that gives you the most passion. I like to surround myself with things that remind me of why I do what I do. I have some of my favorite artists behind me. I've got Bosch, I've got Da Vinci, I've got Shakespeare's collections there. I've got Byzantine to Renaissance because I love seeing things that are beautiful so I can bask in them and it reminds me of why I do what I do. The second that I see things that I love, I'm going to feel at least something brewing like a loaf of bread unfurling beneath my navel. Find what you love surround yourself in it and drown in it because moderation is not key. <laughs> Catch your ideas in the void. Catch every single idea in the void. Write every single idea you have down. On the train, in bed or in the shower and I have an idea, I'm going to roll over, dry my hands on a towel or wake up and turn a lamp on and jot this idea down because every idea is crucial and leads to something. Because as Ginsberg said, First thought, best thought, and we do not want to lose any of our first thoughts. Any fleeting creative thought is a creative thought that you're going to want to remember. This bleeds directly into my next method of salvation, <laughs> if you will, and that is to word vomit, aka journal and mood board. Collect every single idea, every thought, every desire, every want, every need, every idea, no matter how personal or irrelevant or morally reprehensible, write it down, collect it. If somebody read my word vomit documents, I think a SWAT team would be sent to my house. This isn't just journaling either, this goes for mood boarding and anything visual. I'm a visual learner and so I love to make mood boards. I love to curate these pretty little inspirational boards that are hyper specific. They help me inordinately. I'm currently going through this weird phase I'm going to be completely candid with you right now. Hope this doesn't bite me in the bum. Um, of kind of like an obsession with the symbolism of cannibalism. Like obviously cannibalism is 
reprehensible morally and disgusting and absolutely rancid but the symbolism of it in poetry how it often comes up a lot is wanting to consume somebody wanting to just drink somebody because you can't get enough of them so a lot of my writings about that if somebody read my journals We'd have an issue. <laughs> it's just art. I swear to God, it's just art. <laughs> What's that Virginia Woolf quote? And it's something about... Oh, I can't remember it off the top of my head. All feelings, all extreme feelings are allied with that of extreme madness or something like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then the next point is to organize the scraps or play with the scraps of it all. All those started and unfinished works and the bones of what would be, organize them. Decide what's worthy of your time, what's not, what's going to give you the most outcome. When I'm writing poetry, I have this particular document that's the bones of poetry that's kind of started and fizzled and started and fizzled. And if I'm not feeling particularly inspired to start something from scratch, I can just go into this document and pick bits of what I've written and I can go into my mood boards and pick bits of energy that I want to emulate and curate. Drop what is useless and refine what has potential. It's important to know here how many projects to do at once and which ones are going to take more of you and which ones are going to have a better outcome. Because sometimes I will start on a really big project and I'll have too many other things going on and it's just, it's really hard to know which one's more important. I guess I could make that into a point on its own, revise, unfinished, slash started works. Methodically pursue what is actually pursuable. This is going to be completely relative. I can't tell you what's going to be pursuable. You have to know what's going to be pursuable. I can't even tell myself. Personally, I get bogged down in creative slumps if I've got too much going on at once. If I have like three started projects and like four half finished projects, I don't know which one to go back to and that's when I get stumped and that's when I kind of get in my head and take a step back and that's when I take too far of a step back and everything just becomes a blur. Methodically approach what is going to work for you. Now the next one is potentially the most important apart from bask in the glory of beautiful things which I am going to reiterate after this point but create for yourself. Create for yourself again. This sounds simple but it's not. Create for yourself because when you create for other people or when you're creating because you think it's going to be perceived that's when you get bogged down on the perspectives of others. The biggest advice that I have to anybody that shares their art on public platforms is to not even consider the response that you're going to get. Just post it because you made it and you love it and you're proud of it. I say this in the nicest way possible. I'm going to grab your shoulders for this. <laughs> Stop caring so much about external pressure that you've more than likely created and put on yourself. Make creating fun again. Do it just because you want to do it and because you love it and because you're inspired and because you're happy, because it brings you joy. Go back to the heart of it all. Go back to why it started. And just remember how simple and fun everything can be. How simple and fun and beautiful and magic the intention of everything can be. We surround ourselves in beautiful things because it's beautiful. We make art because it's fun. It's just so juvenile and special. I find a lot of people ask me how to find your voice in writing. Personal voice comes from creating what you want to see. Remind yourself of why you create because you love it. Remind yourself that very simple reason of why we make art because we love it. Because art is magic and life is magic and everything is beautiful. And this is why I'm going to reiterate my point of bask in the glory of beautiful things. I cannot stress this enough. I really, really can't. It's so important to be surrounded by things that inspire you. Also music for me. I have to have music playing like 90% of the time. I'm going to offer you a bonus round uh, of a final point that I found really, really helps me. I didn't want to put this early on because this is going to turn a lot of people off. Get offline. <laughs> my service provider went out near my house a few weeks ago because they were doing works and I didn't realize how much of my day I was spending on my phone until I couldn't use my phone. I got a lot of work done in that time. My service is back now. Never thought I'd be sad about that. One method that I do use as a little tip is when I see things that I love or really inspire me across platforms like TikTok and Instagram and whatever you will, I will save 
these very particular boards. I will save them to very particular boards of writing that I like or extracts on this or beautiful art or imagery that I really like and am inspired by and fashion and all those kinds of things. And then when I know I'm in this vulnerable doom scrolling headspace, I'll only let myself go into these boards that I've made. So I won't go on the actual feed, I'll just go in my special sacred space that I've created that inspires me. Sometimes I'll go on a tangent and I'll think to myself, that was genius, that was unbridled genius, and then I'll sit in silence for 30 seconds and think, that was an incoherent rant. Am I incoherently rambling? Maybe. Am I gonna stick with it? Yes. Conviction. That's all I have to say really. I hope I helped. Comment your tips and tricks and your personal trials and tribulations and what you've learnt as an artist. I'd love to know. I'm always still learning. I love you a lot.